What's going on everybody? Kenny Bomb is in the building and welcome to your new favorite spot for everything pro wrestling. And today, we got an interesting update on AEW Fight Forever's DLC future. Scott Fishman of SE Scoops did an interview with AEW and THQ Nordic and they spoke about everything down to Forbidden Door DLC packs. But in order for us to get that or any other DLC for this game, one specific thing has to happen. Let's take a look at the interview. But first, we are just a few days away from this game's release. Let me know in the comment section who you guys plan to use first. Drop a like on this video to help it reach more people. And don't forget to smash that subscribe button if you haven't already. Now let's get to it. <laughs> Run, run, boy. They're coming down. All right, so we head over to SE Scoops. This is where we got the update, but we're not going to look at the full interview because everything doesn't pertain to what we're talking about today. But we are going to hit on some interesting points. So it starts off. They say good things come to those who wait. That's a fact. And many fans are hoping that proves true for All Elite Wrestling's first ever major video game, Fight Forever. This milestone coming June 29th was a long time coming for Nick Sobic, Senior Vice President of Business Development Partnerships and Video Games for AEW. Kenny Omega and I have been working hard on this game for the last three and a half years, every day, he said. One of the number one questions is, what's taking so long? That was our question for a long time. Here's what he had to say. We made a decision to hand animate every single wrestling move in this game. A lot of games, especially simulators, and pretty much all sports games today use motion capture. We decided not to do that. We thought it was worth the investment. We think it's worth it from a player experience standpoint. Now, if you ask me, the, mo the uh, animations in AEW Fight Forever, they do look great, but I think they, it's not a big difference between AEW Fight Forever and like a WWE 2K that does use motion capture. So I think if the, um, if the handmade animations took longer, I don't know why we wouldn't just go with the motion capture because again, it's not a big difference. And also... I don't know. I think it might have been a thing with calls. I think motion capture might be more... Ex that doesn't make sense either. Motion capture definitely sounds like it would be cheaper than spending time doing the handmade animation. So I don't know. I guess it was just a design choice they wanted to go with. But in the future, if it takes this long, let's just use mocap. All right, on to the next interesting point. The exec sees the game as a pillar of AEW itself. That's a good thing. If they see this as a pillar to AEW, that's good for the future. A part of its initial foundation and the future. And knowing there can only be one first, they wanted to do it right. To do that, the new kid on the pro wrestling block formed a partnership with THQ Nordic along with bringing Ukes on board as a developer. THQ Nordic producer David Knudsen was impressed by AEW's overall organization when he began to work on the game. Having worked on games such as WWE SmackDown Shut Your Mouth and WWE SmackDown vs. Raw in the past, Fight Forever marked a return to wrestling for him. So I did not know they still had people from the original THQ working on THQ Nordic. I thought they just bought the name and kind of, you know, was going based off of that. But that's interesting. So they do have somebody who was working on those old Shut Your Mouth games working on this one besides Ukes. Hmm. So that's that's a that's a good thing. You know, that's a good thing for the future as well. Following the history of the arcade style gaming, Nudson loves the fact that it's easy to pick up and play, yet can take some time to formally master. And that's true, and we've seen that in the videos we've seen so far. If you look at Evil Uno play the game, it looks like he's just picking it up and playing it. He's not necessarily a master at the game, but some of these guys who are leaking the footage, you can see all the chain wrestling and all of the different aspects they have in this game that make it look like there is a bit of a learning curve to it, and that makes it very interesting. Very, very interesting for a lot of different reasons. The upcoming next gen release will feature online co-op with the traditional match types you would expect. Come on y'all, I need somebody to win these tag team titles online with me. Bomb squad, let's get to that. Customization modes will allow for custom wrestlers, attires and appearance, movesets, arenas and more to come through DLC updates depending on if you pre-order the Elite Edition or not. At the same time, there are also AEW trademarks like the Casino Battle Royal, Falls Count Anywhere and the Exploding Barbed Wire Deathmatch which is definitely going to be an interesting match all i'm telling you if you want to take it further with your rivals there also there's also an unsanctioned lights out match and yes there is blood now this next part is just crazy to me it's absolutely insane let's read that response 
No blood was ever taken out of this. We never dialed anything back, Knudsen said. We were prepared to take an M rating if that was going to happen. Luckily, we came back with a T rating. Now, do y'all remember that interview uh, Kenny Omega had with Swerve Strickland? I remember. I clearly remember. Co uh, Kenny Omega confirmed they did have to scale the game back before you could make the ring look like a murder scene. Now we see that blood disappears out of the ring. Now, that's not a problem. There was no need to tell false information here because I think it still came out great. If you had to dial it back to get a T rating, that's fine. Who cares? The game, it came out great. It all worked out in the end. So I don't like stuff like this. Let, let's just keep it moving. Now we enter the main event. These next two quotes are interesting for a lot of different reasons. First one, when it comes to the roster, there are the usual top stars of the promotion. However, Sobic appreciates the idea of also having other talents not always on the shows regularly. For example, a favorite for him to play as is Abaddon. With Forbidden Door coming up, it begs the question if we'll see wrestlers from companies AEW collaborates with featured like New Japan Pro Wrestling. Let's check the answer. We have a great relationship with New Japan. If we had unlimited time, we'd probably have both full rosters in our game, Sobic said. That goes back to the fans, love of the game, and continue to play the game and request new characters and new leagues. We have enough flexibility. Everything is on the table. We're excited to see the feedback and what people want to see more of. So they are absolutely in bed for lack of better terms, with New Japan. And New Japan, I'm sure, would be willing to get their wrestlers in this game. So it's highly possible, as long as this game is supported and a lot of people play it and we keep getting on them about this DLC, they will add uh, wrestlers from other promotions into this game. Now, uh, again, we got to get the AEW wrestlers in first. Guys who push this game like Evil Uno need to be in this game. People like Tony Storm, Jamie Hayter, who had good runs at the top of the company. We got to get them in this game first before we look at these DLC packs uh, with wrestlers from other co companies. But this is this is pretty big. He's confirming that, you know, they're open to doing this. If they had time, it would have been done. So we got to we got to support this game, y'all. If we want to get these wrestlers in, in the long run, we got to support the game. And if just me saying that is not enough for you to believe it, let's take a look at this next quote. As for the future of a potential franchise, there are hopes Fight Forever is just the beginning. Sobic teases Easter eggs and fun surprises likened to a big AEW show. I've worked at AEW and known Tony Khan for the last 10 years. I can pretty much tell you that he is one of the most generous people I have ever met. I can tell you, if this game does well, we're going to take those dollars and put that into a AEW video game franchise. Fans speak with their wallets. So we got to support this game if we want them to continue on with the DLC and if we want to get another AEW Fight Forever game. So if you're interested in this game, you got to go out and buy it. Don't wait until it gets $20. We got to show the support up front. But if you can't afford it, then yes, wait until it gets $10 or $20 as long as you give them what you can so we can show them we want more video games from AEW. But we got a lot of good news in this interview, y'all. I'm happy to hear that they are satisfied with the product they came out with. And being that they see it and they see that it can be a success, they're open to doing more. So here's the AEW fight forever too. But I mean, let's get one in our hands first to see how we like that. But I think it's going to be good. Thank y'all for tuning into this video. Don't forget to let me know which wrestler you plan to use first in the comment section. Drop a like on this video so they share it to more people. Smash that subscribe button if you haven't already. Bomb Squad, let's get to that.